Hello there, my name is James, and as I've always said on this channel, I will be the herald for the AI apocalypse for programmers. So when Anthropic released Claude Code on the most expensive subscription plan I have ever seen, I felt I had to bite the bullet and see how good it really was. Since I paid for the subscription, a week has passed, and the first three days were spent reconciling myself for spending $200 a month on, as I said, the most expensive subscription plan I have ever come across. Not 12, not 15, not 20. You know, I thought I was splashing out when I dipped into ChatGPT Plus. $200 a month. So after three days, I was like, okay, James, we've got the rest of the month to actually put Claude Code to good use, see how much of it is bang for buck. And so I decided to build an app. Now, app development is annoying. It's not necessarily hard, but it depends how big your project is. And I had one in the back of my head that I've been delaying, procrastinating doing because it's just a bit of a pain. Web development, easy. It's up and running in a heartbeat. App development, you have to go through 15 different steps. There's emulators, not to mention publishing it is just a real admin. So I was like, it's the perfect task to throw to Claude Code and see how it fares. So I wrote up half a page detailing the intricacies of my desired app and I was like this is going to be laughable I'm spending two hundred dollars it's going to be a waste of my money it's just going to be all kaput but I gave it a shot and I passed it over to Claude Code and said build me this app now Claude Code went away and it likes to tell you exactly what it's thinking what it's doing it narrated the entire process to me and asked for all the permissions on my device which I potentially mistakenly gave it and it went away for about 10 to 15 minutes and I just sat there playing my video game. Now, in that particular moment, I was like, if this is the reality of Claude Code that I can sit here and play World of Warcraft and just chill and come back and forth and just like give it a bit of direction here and there, then that is going to be ridiculous. And so a period of time elapsed, I went back, Claude Code was like, I am done, here is your application. I booted it up on the emulator and I had an error, big old bug, the screen went red, everything broke in front of me, and I was like, I cannot believe I spent all this money. This is exactly what I had hypothesized. I knew it was going to be a waste of time. ChatGPT was extremely average and underwhelming, and Claude Code was no different, except it was 10 times the price on a monthly basis. But because I'm only so much of a Muppet, I decided that I would, you know, I had like 26 days left of my $200 a month subscription. I was determined to get my money's worth. So I gave it the error logs to see if it could fix its own problem, thinking we would just run into walls because it had de developed a substantial amount of code. Like, ChatGPT could had no shot at keeping track of this much context and this much project-based understanding. And I was like, this is going to be exactly the same. It's just not going to be able to cope with the sheer scope and magnitude of this project. And it went away for another five minutes. And then it was like, your bugs are resolved. You may now start up your app. So I opened the app again and it worked. Did pretty much everything that I wanted. It came up with a random design off the cuff that was probably better than I would have done on my first iteration. It had all the features and functionalities I had asked for. It had done them in, you know, per my specification. And that's something that I'll talk about very shortly because that is very important. So now, not only was I grappling with the idea that I might actually renew my ludicrous subscription with them, but I also had a complete existential crisis over the future of programming and what it means for everyone who is currently a software developer. Now before you all run off and panic buy all of the toilet paper in the supermarket in preparation for the impending upending of programming, there's actually good news. There's a silver lining in all of this that I feel I should share. Yes. All the programming had been done, but I still had value in this operation. And this is the crux of the issue. If you can't add value to this operation and the AI can do everything that you can, then you're cooked, you're absolutely smoked, you're dust in the, in the wind, you've been obliterated. However, if I hadn't spent all the time creating the scope, the, you know, the project specification, detailing exactly how I wanted it to look, it couldn't have gone away and coded it comprehensively. And if we just take a step back from all of this and ask ourselves, what does that represent in the real world? Well, I'd basically just been promoted. I went from being a, you know, a software engineer where I'm writing all the code to, you know, like an executive or a, a manager where I was, 
delegating tasks and responsibilities to different people, telling people what they should look like and not having to stress about all the hard manual labor and programming that they were going to have to do to bring it to light. And I've always said that the best junior developers are the junior developers where you can give them a task and have confidence that they're going to deliver something to you. And to be fair, Claude Code was absolutely meeting those criteria for me. And what does this mean if you're a junior developer? Well, you might immediately think that, oh, well, all the ju junior developer jobs are just going to be out the window because that's essentially what it's doing. I'm giving it like a little a milestone, an objective, a ticket, and it's just going out and completing that for me. But if you can get the experience, learn to code, do all the hard yards, do the first principles, you know, like I can sit here and build all the stuff that it can build. And because I've done all of that, because I've developed so many projects, because I know exactly what these things should look like, I can have this promotion. If you can't sit there and know exactly what your app is going to look like before you've gone and coded it, then, you know, that might be some murky water that you probably don't want to dive into. However, if you can spend the time learning how to code, doing it the hard way, not just getting AI to do everything for, you know, from day one for you, if you do that, that's when you get replaced. If you can learn everything, if you can build a whole lot of projects by yourself, if you can have the experience to fall back on where you just know what these things would look like because you've done it so many times before, then you're going to be an absolute weapon when you know exactly what it looks like. You can write up an extremely explicit project specification and then you can give it to the AI. And when it gives you something back, you know what you're looking at. You can say, no, I really don't like that. That's not going to fly. We need to change these specific things for these exact reasons. I want you to add these very niche features in these exact locations. So do you still need to code? In my opinion, yes, because that's where the experience comes from in the first place. And if you don't have that, don't know what to say. How else do you get the experience building out the projects? The other cool thing that's really good news is now if you can get that experience and you can have these promotions and just skip being a junior developer altogether, then you legitimately have the means within your reach to go and work six jobs and then you can actually afford the $200 a month subscription. Because currently that's not going to be affordable for many people in the grand scheme of things. And so there's going to be a huge you know, disparity between people who can have access to these tools and people who can't. So go work six jobs. I know it's not ethical and probably... I'm not legitimately recommending that, but maybe I am. And with all of that said, it's time to introduce my very first game because I'm now a self-proclaimed AI game developer. It's what I've always wanted to do, but game development was a bit stressful. So now I have the tools I need to go and build my very first game, Alpha Defense. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the Learn to Code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one. <laughs> 